Today we are continuing on uh, contending for the mentors of the fathers of revival and um, the focus on one of the fathers that you'll be uh, speaking about is Jonathan Edwards. So Father, I just wanna thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this moment that we have gathered here this morning. Heavenly Father contending for Heavenly Father, the mentor of our forefathers in the name of Jesus Christ. We just Amen. ask you, Holy Spirit, to brood over this platform right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that we do not speak out of our own intellect or out of our own strength, but we depend and hear entirely from you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Pastor Light. Everyone Thank you. Now, Jonathan Edwards, I was fascinated reading about him. <laughs> he... I'm just going to, because of time, be short and talk about his qualities. One of his qualities was he was remarkably known for his intellect and the reverent fear of the Lord. Jonathan Edwards was described as a dispassionate revivalist because he was not fleshy about his eloquence, his intellect, or even the elegance of his physical attributes or his beauty. He defended the gospel with the utmost reverent fear of the Lord. And despite his intellect, you know, even though he was that intelligent from a younger age, noticed as of 14 years going into Yale College, he was radically obedient to God. And he did not take the grace of God for granted. Mm. Hence, one of his books was Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God which unfortunately then earned him a label as an emotional and judgmental revivalist. But despite the criticism, Jonathan Edwards feared God than men. Romans chapter 12 verse three says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but think of yourself with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God has given us. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Right now, brethren, let us pray for the reverent fear of God. There is no way there's going to be any revival if we don't have the reverent fear of God. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Mighty God, we are praying right now for the fear of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to be instilled upon the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have suffered much because of mediocrity of spirit, because of total reliance on the self. So, Father, for revival to break out, we are praying, my heavenly Father, for the reverent fear of God, for the radical obedience to God, that we shun, heavenly Father, any self reliance in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we come with humility of spirit and obedient hearts, where, heavenly Father, we have sometimes elevated ourselves highly than we ought to. And so, Father, God, we ask for that forgiveness. We repent, my God, and we come before you with repentant hearts so that you instill in us, my God, the fear of God that is the beginning of wisdom. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Another attribute of Jonathan Edwards was he gave his all to God. When he was 17 years old, he had experienced distress in his life. He had said to the Swedes, and I quote, I wish to lie low before God, as in the dust, that I might be nothing, and that God might be all, that I might become as a little child. That was Jonathan Edwards. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, 21, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself up, gave himself up for me. Verse 21, I do not set aside the grace of God 
For if righteousness through the law comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Edward's preaching on justification by faith, according to the readings that I had, is that it sparked a spiritual revival. A spiritual revival broke up in his parish. They now understood a relational encounter with God. There was a shift in his parish, in his ministry. And it says that there were sudden conversions, conversions of the heart and a relational, that relational encounter with God. Now, this kind of sudden conversions of the heart is what we long for. No more gimmicks of flashing of titles. No more flesh, no more usual rhetoric, no more relying on the self. So this is the prayer that we lay down our lives. So we pray for pastors, we pray for apostles, evangelists, the body of Christ, everyone and everyone who claim, proclaim the knowledge of God, that we will all lay it down, acknowledge the sovereign power of God, and shun any self-preserving text. Like Jonathan Edwards, let us come to God with an empty heart. Let's just empty ourselves, become nothing before him so that he can become all in us. When we do that, we can expect God to pour out his grace and we will see this sudden list of conversions of the heart of people. So let us lay ourselves before God with brokenness and an emptiness so he may fill us. Amen. Let us pray. Like you have Heavenly Father, Edwards, who prayed, who lay his life down and wished to be nothing, Heavenly Father, so that we could be all in his life. We pray the same prayer. We come with crying, spirits, desperate, Heavenly Father, for you to fill us in. We lay ourselves down. Heavenly Father, by your grace, help us empty ourselves so that you can fill us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be that, Heavenly Father, we will shun every kind of gimmicks, any self lies any self observing tactics. Let us stop and let you, Heavenly Father, be the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who knows it all, the one who knows the plans that he has for us, the plans that he has for his kingdom, how he wants his kingdom come and his will be done on earth. But then, to this, months, vessels that have been emptied out so that you can call in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> as empty vessels that you can fill, that you can rewrite our story. You, Heavenly Father, can write a lot about what you want done on this earth, Heavenly Father, to duplicate your will in kingdom, be done here on earth, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yourself, Sister Mary. So Jonathan Edwards was Jonathan Edwards was an inspiring revivalist. His sermons that were published were packaged as the justification of faith were read extensively in the US and also in England. This fueled the great awakening in the years 1739 to 1741. He inspired other preachers like Whitefield, who one time it was said that Whitefield came to preach in his church and the atmosphere was described as an extraordinarily melted church. Now I tried to imagine how that scene could have been, an extraordinarily melted church where everyone mm. just broke, the whole church it says melted in tears. Now that tells me of a supernatural anointing that is capable of breaking the yoke. We long for this extraordinary melting where our hearts will melt really with an, indescri in an indescribable and unique way. 
So, and at this moment being the month of August, this is a moment of divine impartation, the month of Eli, an angelic visitation, and a gracious moment really of possibilities. A moment where our strength is renewed and where we can gain clarity of vision, where we lack wisdom we could ask. Luke chapter 1 verse 36 says, look, even Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may it happen unto me according to your word. Then the angel angel left. Nehemiah 6 verse 9 says, For they were all trying to frighten us, saying their hands will be weakened in their work and it will never be finished. But now, my God, strengthen my hands. That time is now, in this month of Elul, that time of angelic visitation and divine impartation. Now, this is our prayer, that we have a yielding spirit, Where there has been barrenness, we declare and decree fruitfulness. So Mary said, like Mary said, let it be unto me. I pray that we maintain that posture today on this platform where we say, God, let it be unto me as according to your word. I pray that, let us pray that our faith arise and like Nehemiah, be able to speak with authority and power and say, now God, now God, now God, raise my arm, raise my hand. Amen. So let us pray. Let us be yielded. Let us come with a posture of a yielded spirit where we have the faith, understanding that this, where we are at right now, this is not just a power platform. We are at a sacred moment in time where mm. God himself is willing and ready to impart his power, where the times are in our favor, aligned mm. with what God wants to do in our lives. So let's pray. I pray that our faith arise. This is a sacred moment that no one on this platform, no one as a child of God globally be left out, that our eyes be open to reckon this moment of favor where God speaks and it shall become in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us arise Father, I pray we declare victory over the Syrian army that is threatening our families, our nations, our economies. We silence the arrogance and the cloud and mocking spirit of the Sandaraks and the Tobias and the Lufthansa Diaz. the Lord is strengthening our arms. The Lord is strengthening our arms. The Lord is renewing our strength. The Lord is renewing our strength. The Lord is renewing our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's a sacred moment of In the name of Jesus Christ, we 
Thank you so much, Sister Mary. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. That was awesome. We give thanks to God for his grace upon your life and keep rising, keep growing, keep waxing strong for your king.